What is currently happening programs? Today I'm going to cover Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice VR edition and answer the question, is it good? This is a tale of binaural schizophrenic righteousness through the tyranny of fire and illusion compounded by virtual reality. But how does it perform in VR and should you buy it? Well, get ready to walk into the world. Look it in the eye and you will go to war. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is a BAFTA award-winning tale of a Pictish woman with a pretty consistent case of psychosis on a journey to rescue the soul of her dead lover from the Norse goddess Hela. In pure gameplay terms, it's a Celtic godsend and is easily one of the biggest indie success stories of recent years where a team of 20 have presented a title of AAA spectacle and staggering quality. So let's look at how that works in VR. There's a recurring trend online line lately that goes, there's no fucking point in third person VR gaming, which always comes from people who either haven't tried VR or who haven't played Edge of Nowhere or Kronos. Well, add Hellblade to that list as it's a seated experience and only supports keyboard and mouse, a gamepad, or Oculus Touch controllers as a gamepad. And while this may cause... It works perfectly, and in this instance, I actually prefer it that way. What in the hairy Norse balls are you talking about, you may ask? Well, the game is third person for starters, so you get nothing from motion controllers as you can't swing your arms about and have that translate as well to a character a few feet away. So why bother? Because playing this game with a VR headset is exactly the same as on a console or PC flat monitor. Except you're actually there in the canoe with Senua and not just looking at someone doing that on a flat panel. Okay, a higher res flat panel, I'll give you that, but... This game's story and execution transcends resolution alone. The voices in your head will surround you as you work your way through a world of trickery and brimstone, searching the environment for shapes to open the gates. That'll make more sense in a minute. You'll battle gods from Norse mythology, and watching this video, you've really got no fucking idea if I'm even wearing pants. Plus, I got to use my favourite headphone amp and headphones for crystal audio clarity and a sub pack for huge amounts of rumbling bass. So then, what's not to like? Well, there are some caveats to all this, but I'll get into those in a minute. First, the menu options and performance. The VR settings menu has a few head steering options where off means you can only use the thumbsticks or keys to steer. Run only means that when you run and move your head, Senua will slowly arc towards the direction you are looking and the camera will gently pan around to your viewpoint. But when you slow to a walk, the thumbsticks or keys are your only method of directing Senua and always meant that when either walking or running, if you turn your head, Senua will move towards that direction while you hold forward on your thumbstick or keys. Setting snap turn to continuous means that you can use thumbsticks or arrow keys to spin the view horizontally. You can't tilt the view up or down though as this is done solely by physically moving your head. You could also use the mouse to spin the view but oh good god that was a no go, even for me. Usually I prefer faster VR mouse movements but when it's locked to horizontal turning only it's no good. I 100% recommend sticking with the arrow keys if you're using a keyboard. Setting snap turning to 30 or 45 degrees meant that with a gamepad or keys you get the snap turning you would expect, but mouse movement is then disabled altogether. The camera vertical offset lets you raise or lower the position of the camera behind Senua, and you could change this in increments of 10 ranging from 0 to 100. The same could be done for the camera horizontal offset, though I'm not sure at all why someone would need to set this to 100. The benefit of more reasonable values here is that you can get that Resident Evil 4 viewpoint that was so good. Also, if you are recording your gameplay, the default angle behind Senua is a little low, so this helped to alleviate that too. On that note, if you are a Rift user, you'll definitely want to use the Oculus Mirror to record your gameplay, as not only is the default screen output much lower resolution than what you can get from Oculus Mirror, it's also a 
a lot more off centre, as you can see here switching between the two. This isn't limited to this game though, it's just by default that monitor output captures a low left eye dominant. Just keep in mind that if you are using the Oculus Mirror to capture your gameplay, you won't be able to use a keyboard and mouse while doing that. And actually I'd recommend a gamepad over keyboard and mouse for this one anyways. Also in the experimental section there is a tabletop mode, which isn't how I would play the game but was really really neat to play around with. There's also a giant mode but I didn't really see the point in that except maybe some low angle captures. All in all I found that setting the headset staring to run only, the snap turning to continuous and the camera vertical offset to 10 gave me the best viewing experience. The other settings in that menu I just left as default. Performance wise I have an i7 7820X CPU, a Strix GTX 1070 graphics card and 16 gig of DDR4 RAM and the game ran great at high settings. I could easily see how GTX 1060 owners could play this title on medium settings with absolutely no issues. Looking at the Steam Store page though, it has the recommended minimum graphics card listed as a GTX 1080 or AMD RX 580, which is A, substantial and B, not exactly the mainstream gamer's GPU of choice, purely because of the price. And if you were to crank this game settings all the way to max, then I'd say yep. That's definitely what you're gonna need. And for those wondering, going off by the way this game plays, that isn't likely due to poor optimization on the developer's part. It is, after all, a modern game that requires heavier specs in comparison to something like Skyrim VR, which you can check out in this review video or this mod video here, which weighs in with the GTX 970 or RX 480 as the recommended minimum. By default, the game set me to very high settings and one 40 resolution scaling, which I would guesstimate that to be the equivalent of 1.4 super sampling in the Oculus Debug or Tray tool and about 180% for the Steam VR tweakers out there. More on that in this video here. And to be honest, on the beach, on a clear day, this setting worked absolutely fine, with the Oculus performance HUD showing an almost constant 90 FPS, which is exactly how any VR game should be played. Moving into environments with more animated foliage and detailed textures going on though saw my performance take a bit of a nosedive and the experience was instantly more motion sickening than it needed to be. Even more so when the weather got a little more dynamic and more again in open areas of fire and smoke. To alleviate that, the graphic settings I settled on was a resolution scale of 120, foliage at high, post-processing very high, shadows on medium, and textures, view distance, and view effects set at high. I also left the disable LOD setting as default and didn't have any other super sampling going on outside of that. The result, an almost constant 90 frames per second in any environment, while maintaining crisp visuals and increased presence. As a side note, the other option you have is the performance modes in the settings menus, but overall I generally find it better to have a slight reduction in fixed manual settings over any kind of dynamic resolution mode. The third person camera was an intelligent mix of thumbstick and head turning in combination with gentle camera rotation when you need to view further around than is physically comfortable. When you see an in-game cutscene it zooms out to a little windowed view which prevents what would otherwise be some pretty serious motion sickness from all the edgy camera shake. Not ideal as the resolution of current gen Rift or Vive HMDs just isn't quite sharp enough yet to view the finer details in the cinematic scenes. To be fair though, I can't think of a better solution myself and it wasn't actually bad in any way, though being able to toggle the level of zoom would have been good. And going from the cinematic mode to the full experience was pretty damn cool. Mechanically, combat worked exceptionally well in third person, the camera never got stuck or just fucked around inconveniently like something you would see out of Dark Souls before the camera patch. All the buttons were in place and dodging, running, walking, turning, climbing, crouching, fighting or interacting with objects was all completely flawless. To progress through the game I had to fight what wasn't a huge range of enemies but what seemed to be just the right amount in terms of keeping the game balanced and not skewed more towards combat. And in saying that I wouldn't recommend this game for the combat elements alone anyway as it's more of a welcome button pushing addition to the story. The puzzle 
levels to progress consisted of following both visual and audio cues through startling but beautiful environments where the landscape itself is a solution to the runes, or with the intent of breaking the seals on a series of gates and moving on to the next area. I was intrigued by the way the puzzles were presented and loved solving them, but again, wouldn't consider that alone to be a reason to buy the game. If you die in game, you get slowly taken over by rot each time, and this will eventually lead to a permadeath and loss of all your progress, which keeps the tension high as fuck in general, though I didn't test this out myself. I never died in any fight as they were a little too easy, but not too easy, and this can be changed in the in-game menu anyways. I only ran into death's lifeless arms when I couldn't quite figure out where to go when the world was ablaze. All up, it was a well-balanced mix of fighting, walking, puzzle solving and cinematics. Comfort wise, thanks to the gentle camera rotation implemented here, most will be fine with this one, provided you use snap turning in places where you constantly have to look around a lot, i.e. when trying to find the solution to a puzzle. The constant camera follow, standard in third person games, wasn't really an issue, though I would say that programs prone to extreme motion sickness will struggle with it. My advice for most is to use continuous turning with run only head steering while moving from place to place, lightly browsing at scenery and for fighting. But when you hit a puzzle solving area, switch to 30 degree snap turning because you will be looking around a lot and that constant horizontal only panning will make your head spin like a coin toss. The binaural audio in this game left me nothing less than disturbingly astonished. Senua's psychosis causes severe hallucinations, not excluding voices that simultaneously mock doubt and encourage. Constant whispers that fill a particular space in your sphere and move about your head like deviant suggestions, but they aren't consistent. There's no good on the left, bad on the right. They're scattered like the reality that consumes her and as illusionary as the windows that alter this ongoing incubation of insanity. There's no escape in VR. On a flat monitor, you physically turn away from the fear and nothing is there, hopefully. But here, if you physically turn around, you're still coming face to face with with whatever the dev see fit to shift your emotional focus. It's just a better way to play a third person game like this. You can choose to look at a flat screen as you watch the story take place, or you can be there in the boat with Senua, right there looking at everything as if it were a tangible object, moving through the world with her on the journey. The problem is, I can't keep but think I've wasted my life playing console games, staring at a screen watching someone else play me. But VR is like like I finally own my own copy and this is the first time I'm actually playing the game. Things don't look grand in scale, they are grand in scale, believe it. And it's games like Hellblade in VR that push me further down that rabbit hole. In saying that, there were some technical issues. For one, foliage and various game geometry constantly load slower than the rest of the environment, but usually not until you get right on top of it, and then objects just pop up sporadically out of nowhere and it initially rips you from the experience. And the same can be said for some textures, primarily rock faces and stone walls, and objects a little further away. And setting the view distance to max or enabling the LOD option in the settings menu did nothing to help the situation. Though that could be a VRAM limitation of my GTX 1070 graphics card and a good reason why the GTX 1080 is a recommended minimum. The only saving grace is that Senua is fucking crazy and you could almost attribute the impromptu scenery to that. Not a game breaker, but unfortunately noticeable. Also, being restricted to a horizontal spin and not being able to look up and down with your mouse is sickening at best. I love mouse and keyboard VR games like Quake or Alien Isolation, but they differ in that they let me look in all directions with a mouse and my stomach is better for it. Another reason to stick to a gamepad, or at the very least the keyboard keys for this one. But as I said, a couple of caveats can't hold back what is otherwise an exceptional game in itself, and an epic VR port overall. For 30 bucks, the game is priced right. At around 8 to 9 hours playtime, for me it's perfect. There's not enough VR experience, was a valid argument a year ago, but now I can hardly keep up. 
I love the idea of sitting on my ass and playing right through a game in two sittings. It's good to have a seated game where I can chuck on my own headphones and use a sub pack. It's good to chill and not swing my arms about or stay on my feet for nine hours. I'm not out of shape, but sometimes that just fucking sucks. With the gamepad, this feels like the literal future of console games. I mean, why would you observe from outside the world when you can observe from within? And Hellblade is unique in that you yourself are an interactive part of the story as Senua interacts with you in curious and terrifying ways, which pulls you deeper into the environment. And the mocap and voices are exceptional. All up, I'm giving Hellblade VR a very, very solid 8 out of 10, because the voices told me so. Literally, if it weren't for the constant smaller world geometries popping in and out of existence and the horizontal only mouse panning, this would have easily been a 9 out of 10. But aside from that, it's a brilliant stepping stone into the world of virtual insanity, and I highly recommend you oblige the voices. With Oculus funded games like Edge of Nowhere and Kronos starting the third person VR call to arms, Hellblade answers with confidence and screams of agony. <laughs> It's a call out to other dev teams that porting existing games to virtual reality or building in support like this from the start is a feasible consideration. It's not always specifically about breaking new ground. Sometimes giving us familiar ground to walk on in a virtual reality can be just as powerful. Though, shout out to those innovating in the VR space too. Break away from the strict perspective that VR has to have motion controls. See VR for all the things it can be, not just all the things it seems ideally suited for. Ninja Theory have understood this and actioned it, and you really are missing out if you own a Rift, Vive or WMR headset, and you like these types of games but aren't at least giving this a sit-in. Pants optional. Pants are optional. Pants are they though? Yes, they are. Plus the game itself is out fucking standing, in my opinion. And that's it for this review. You can help support this channel by grabbing exclusive rewards on Patreon. And if you like this video, then crush that like button, have your say in the comments below, and hit the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.